everyone, so today we are doing a very exciting video. In this video, we are going to be recreating Lady Diana's jaw-dropping wedding dress, complete with a 25-foot train for a fraction of the cost. And this is my love letter to Lady Diana. She was loving, she was caring, she was generous, and she was an amazing person. And in this video, we are going to cherish her through the art of recreating her dress. Now making this dress for a fraction of the cost is going to be very easy, seeing how her dress was valued at $115,000. And I spent about $400 on materials, which makes that 0.34782607% the cost of the real thing. Yes, I did search that percentage because obviously that didn't come from my brain. So yeah, we're creating this dress for very affordable in comparison. There are so many reasons why I would consider this the most famous dress in the world. Obviously I am biased to huge puffy sleeves, but this dress has it and they are like the puffiest I've ever seen. The bows, the sequins, the embroidery, the 25 foot train I mentioned earlier. Like, come on, that is jaw dropping. This dress was made by David and Elizabeth Emanuel and it is made from ivory taffeta. Now I realize what you're probably thinking. Mia, you do not have the skill to make this dress. And I was concerned of that too. But here's how I see it. How do you really know what you can do until you try it? You know, like the worst thing we could do is fail. I'm not scared of failing. I'm scared of not trying. And yes, I haven't forgot that a year ago I literally couldn't sew anything. I haven't forgotten about that. But I'm still gonna try and do this. And with all that being said, let's get sewing. So I had allotted five eight hour days to complete this dress. With a project of this size, you gotta be organized. Oh my gosh, that rhymed. I didn't even realize that. I ordered everything online months ago and I was so excited to dive into the silk taffeta I bought. I've never worked with a fabric like this before and definitely never worked with this amount before. My arms are actually breaking. <laughs> cause I have to roll it like this cause it's all bent. This was 45 meters of fabric. I basically spent the first hour making this dress just playing with the sheer mass of fabric I had ordered, taking multiple videos of me just throwing it around. Because I honestly feel like this is the only time I'm going to be surrounded by this much fabric for one project. This is definitely the biggest sewing project I've ever done and the most fabric I've ever bought in my life. Along with the fabric, I had got many other detail pieces like different lace, one actually being a table runner. And that's the thing, just because it was supposed to be a table runner doesn't mean it's not gonna be a part of Lady Diana's recreated dress. I decided to make the bodice first. I would adapt a corset pattern I'd used before. I thought this was a good idea because I've already made it once before. Looking back and forth from the inspiration photo to the fabric, I was able to trace out freehand what I thought Lady Di's neckline looked like. I really didn't realize the level of detail in this dress until I started recreating it and like seeing all of the extra things on this dress. One problem I ran into with this fabric was it wasn't completely opaque. So whenever I was creating something, I had to cut out two and sew them together before I could put anything together. So I honestly feel like I made this dress twice. You guys, I'm so thankful for my ironer. <laughs> Without her, my wrist would be snapping off. <laughs> After I had the bodice constructed, I wanted to add some of the details that Lady Di's dress had, like this giant ruffle across the top and also the lace trim down the front with the edges. I wanted to complete the ruffle at the top, so I did some hand pleating on that and made three different layers to that. There was the silk taffeta, the lace that was actually a table runner, and then some other lace trim. Once I made that and attached it to the bodice, then it was time to take the lace down the front piece and then put trim on the sides as well. And then finishing the eight hour bodice off, we made a bow and stuck it on the front. All right, day one is complete. This is everything I did today. It doesn't look like much, but honestly it took me all day and it was a lot of work. But this is Lady Di's wedding dress, okay? It's gonna take me a hot minute. Now day two, we were gonna tackle the sleeves. Now I know it sounds weird to have a whole day just set aside for sleeves, but I mean, look at these sleeves. They were obviously gonna take me forever. 
Now I made the first sleeve off camera just to test it out. Okay, I just spent like two hours making the sleeve and now I have to make the other one and I have absolutely no idea how I did this. Uh, I can't really remember the process, so this should be interesting. Also, I'm looking a little rough right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So at first I was freehanding the shape and I actually made a sleeve with this, but it was way too small. So I had to go back to the drawing board and basically double the sleeve size. Like seriously, these sleeves are a ton of fabric. And then of course we had the opacity issue. So we had to do two layers of that. Down the shoulder seam, we just had to ruffle it a little bit so that it would fit in the sleeve hole. And then measuring my arm out, I sewed in some elastic so that we'd be able to push it up and have that really poofy moment. And then the same trim that I added along the neckline, I made that again and added it on the bottom of the sleeve. And with that, day two was complete. Now I was so excited to do the skirt day. I had no idea how I was gonna do this. I've never actually made a full length skirt before. So I Googled a skirt pattern measurement and I just basically copied that out and hoped for the best. Originally I was gonna make this out of only two pieces of this pattern, but then I was like, you know what? Let's go all out, let's do three. And I think that was the right decision, but as you can see, it was a ton of fabric. So pleating this in to fit the waistline took a hot minute. I think having this much fabric though really made the skirt look extra full and very glam, so I think this was the right choice. Oh my gosh, it's looking so good. Wait, why does it look so good right now? Holiday interruption! If you didn't see my last video, this is probably coming as a shock. Thank goodness you're here now because this giveaway is not gonna last forever. I'm giving away a Tuoto Matoshi dress every week. This week, the dress that we're giving away is this one right here. Again, I'm not buying it until I pick the giveaway winner and they can send me their custom sizes or pick a general size and I will ship it out. But yeah, if you would like to win this dress, make sure to check the description on how to enter. And then I had to sew in a zipper. I hate sewing in zippers. I think I did an okay job with this one, but oh my goodness, it is not fun. Like, can I hire someone to just sew zippers for me? Because I don't want to do it. Especially with a dress of this size, I don't want to. And then my mom and I had to take the tedious time of measuring it to the floor because every time I make a skirt, it's super wonky and uneven and I didn't want that to happen with this one. So we took about an hour and just measured each side to the floor so it was 100% correct. So thank you mom for that. I recently put a TV up in my sewing room. So at this point I was watching Aquamarines, which I'm so happy Aquamarine was here to support me during this moment where I was sewing lace to the bottom of the dress. First, of course, I hemmed it, which took forever, but then I was attaching lace to the bottom. I thought I'd measured it out. I thought I'd have enough. I didn't. So then I had to go into the dress, flip it inside out and cut the lace in half so that I would have enough to finish the bottom of the dress. And that's just the kind of stuff that happens when you don't plan correctly, which, you know, I'm kind of an expert at that. But once all the lace was in, the bottom of the dress looked so finished. I put the circle skirt on and I was just loving how it looked. I had a teeny bit of extra time, so I added some detail along the back. And then the final day was to create the train. Lady Diana's train was 25 feet long. Oh my goodness so long. I really, really wanted mine to be to scale. So I measured out the last bit of fabric I had of the silk taffeta. Originally, I wanted to have them be two layers folded together so it was opaque. But once I pulled it out, I realized I only had about 12 feet if I was gonna fold it, but I had 25 feet if I was gonna do a single layer. So it became clear because you know what? It may not be opaque enough, but it will be long enough. So I cut that all out and then I did the painstaking task of ironing 50 feet of lace in a double edge. Lady Di's dress has this beautiful lace along the train, so I thought I better do that. Oh my gosh, 
I think we have enough lace to actually do 25 feet. Now I need to really think. Think, Mia, think. We've gotta do it. We've gotta at least try. We need to try! So yeah, 25 times two is 50. So yeah, it was about 50 feet of lace to iron and then 50 feet of lace to sew onto the train. I am being dramatic because it was so it was so time consuming, but I was also watching Bride Wars, so I was having a good time. And with that, I just pleated the train and then sewed on a contraption so that I could attach the train and take it off so it didn't have to be on all the time. And I think it was complete. Now finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, presenting my attempt at recreating Lady Diana's wonderful wedding dress. super proud with how this dress turned out. You really don't know what you can tackle until you try it. That is something I really want to say to you guys because honestly, like I couldn't sew anything. You know, you probably watched me fail at sewing constantly to the point where I truly thought I would never be able to sew anything in my life. And I feel like that's kind of a life lesson for multiple things, like not just for sewing, it's for anything. Like even if you're not good at it off the start, it doesn't mean you won't get better. And I also feel like you don't have to be amazing at something to enjoy it. There are so many things in my life that I am just no good at, but I genuinely think are so, so fun. So I do them anyways. And I really hope that you guys take that away too, because because you don't have to be amazing at something to enjoy it. Don't get me wrong about this dress, it is far from perfect. There are many mistakes that an amateur sewer like me just can't avoid. But this is the closest I'll ever be to wearing Lady Diana's dress. It looks very similar to me. Like I'm so happy with how it turned out. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for coming along with me on this ride of trying to recreate this dress. If you enjoyed, make sure to click the subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.